Welcome to the Fun Astrology and Merriman Market Analyst Saturday Financial Podcast. I'm Thomas Miller. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the free weekly newsletter that's published every weekend on MMACycles.com, even a holiday one by Ray Merriman. Can you tell he's a Capricorn? And there is a particularly good second section here in the short-term geocosmics talking about what's getting ready to happen on Sunday of this week with Uranus and Pluto both. Some really good astrology coming up. But first, let's take a look at the markets this week. The report here is recorded on August 31st for the week of September 2nd. And of course, Monday is a financial market holiday due to Labor Day. Kicking off the review section, an article from Friday's CNBC, the Commerce Department reported Friday that the personal consumption expenditure price index rose 0.2 percent on the month and was up 2.5 percent from the same period a year ago, exactly in line with the Dow Jones consensus estimates. In recent days, policymakers, such as Chair Jerome Powell, have expressed confidence that inflation is progressing back to the Fed's 2 percent goal. The Fed is expected now to switch from a nearly complete focus on bringing down inflation to at least an equal concentration on supporting the labor market. End quote. Now, Ray's summary of the markets, it's over, he says, but that was certainly a strange Mercury retrograde cycle, August 5th through the 28th. It started out with a huge reversal on Monday, August 5th, right as the trickster show, Mercury retrograde, began. It's very unusual for a planetary cycle to bottom right as Mercury turns retrograde. It's even more unusual to see a 50-week cycle bottom then. It's also strange that the U.S. stock market rallied sharply for the next 10 days, creating a series of bullish technical signals. Usually, the trickster weaves in and out of swings every one to four days with false buy and sell signals along the way. But this time, the rallies were legitimate. The trickster started behaving normally, well, in its usual abnormal way, with one- to four-day swings after it passed the midpoint of its cycle on August 16th and 17th. But even then, some global indices continued to make new cycle and even all-time highs, while others did not. We call this intermarket bearish divergence which, as the name implies, has bearish implications. But that conflicts with the amplitude of the rallies that started on the low of August 5th. Those rallies indicated a new 50-week cycle, and that's bullish. So we leave this Mercury retrograde cycle with the same frame of mind that we leave most Mercury retrograde cycles. Mixed signals. A little bit of uncertainty in the near-term market outlook, but optimistic that normal charting signals will soon return. As far as the longer-term outlook, I'll stay with my prior views given in the special alerts two weeks ago that the U.S. and many global stock indices are in a new bullish stage. Several global indices confirmed this with their new all-time highs last week. In Asia and the Pacific Rim, all equity indexes rallied into the end of the week, as India's Nifty leading the way with another all-time high on Friday. It was the only major market to do so in this region, although others came close. China's Shanghai Composite was a bit of an exception as it dropped to its lowest level in six months on Thursday, but then had a sharp rally on Friday. In Europe, there was also a case of intermarket bearish divergence as the German DAX soared to a new all-time high on Friday, August 30th. The London FTSE and Zurich SMI had smart rallies and came close to their all-time highs, while the AEX also rallied but remained well off its all-time high made on July 15th. The United States also exhibited intermarket bearish divergence with the Dow Jones Industrial Average making a new all-time high late last week, But this was not matched in the Nasdaq and S&P, which had decent rallies, but still well off their highs of mid-July, when Mars, Uranus, and Algol all conjoined in late Taurus. The Bovespa Index of Brazil also made a new all-time high last week. In other markets, gold flirted with new all-time highs, but then started to pull back in earnest on Friday. Silver breached the $30 mark during the week, but couldn't sustain it as it closed near the lows of the week on Friday. 
Crude oil was also a disappointment, rallying nicely early in the week, but then also closing near its weekly lows on Friday. Bitcoin started the week looking positive, trading around 65000 but by Friday it was trading below 58000 again, casting doubt on the view that it has turned the corner on its bearish behavior since its all-time high recorded back on March 14th at 73803 Nevertheless, an overlap of cyclical and geocosmic time bands suggest an important low or retest of the August 5th low may be unfolding within the next five weeks. Now the short-term geocosmics. A quote from the Buddha. Before you speak, let your words pass through three gates. Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? That was quoted by the Psyche Wizard in a post on X on August 29th. Ray says, there goes Mercury retrograde, but here comes its higher octave, Uranus retrograde. We lose the trickster, but now get the disruptor. Whereas Mercury represents the mind and communications, Uranus represents the genius mind that often gets ahead of itself when trying to communicate its insights in a logical, believable way. It's the solution that no one is ready to accept. It can also be the rebel that refuses to accept the logical solution. Think of Mercury as the calculator and Uranus as the high-speed computer. Mercury as the automobile and Uranus as the space rocket or Mercury as the wind, and Uranus as a hurricane or a tornado. In terms of markets, Mercury can indicate short-term fakeouts, whereas Uranus represents breakouts of long-term resistance or support, or sharp corrections against the trend, followed by reversals back with the trend. It's a disruption to the trend, or a breakout to new highs or lows in the direction of the underlying trend. In either case, there is an element of surprise, usually in the amplitude of the move. It can also relate to natural calamities like earthquakes and hurricanes. However, Uranus turning retrograde may not be the most significant geocosmic signature taking place next week. Also on Sunday, September 1st, as Uranus turns retrograde, Pluto will re-enter Capricorn due to its own retrograde motion. It will stay there until November 19th, when it enters Aquarius for the next 19 to 20 years. Pluto has been, and will be, dancing back and forth over the Capricorn-Aquarius cusp five times between March 23, 2023 and November 19th, 2024. Pluto is the planet of reformation, transformation, endings, and beginnings. Capricorn represents the past, the history and traditions of the human race, or of a nation. Aquarius represents the new, the modern, the future, the need to change things dramatically, even radically. Like Uranus, the planet that rules the sign of Aquarius, new ideas and reforms can be ahead of themselves to the point that others resist, at least at first. It is as if the world is trying to decide if it wants to reform the past and rewrite history going back many, many years, even centuries, or if it wants to reform the radical movements that have disrupted life and customs as they were experienced for many years and even centuries until recently. The old versus the new, the young and the restless versus the aged and the wise. Thus, between September 1st through November 19th, we are at this crossroads between the two eras, the two dynamics, the two choices of direction, and their potentially vast differences. It seems to be reflected quite clearly in the upcoming U.S. presidential election, which takes place November 5th, between former President Donald Trump and current Vice President Kamala Harris. To many, they seem to be polar opposites. But if you remove biases and just look at the 2025 ingress chart of the United States and apply the dynamics of planets and their aspects involved 
in the 2025 to 2027 Aries vortex, it is not the end of the world as each side accuses the other of fomenting. The image that comes to mind is being alone in a room with two doors. You have to make a choice on which door to enter. You don't know what is on the other side. You have great hope that one will lead to happiness and good fortune. You also fear that the other door will lead to misery and tragedy. But what you don't know is that whichever door you choose, it reveals a path that leads to the same end result. As Pluto struggles to define which is more important to the most number of people, the 2024 election is shaping up to be a very close race. Both candidates claim to be the mantle of change. Both are trying to attract the middle from a perceived position of extremes by members of the opposing side. Both have strong charts with transits and progressions showing the potential of a victory. At the time of the election, Pluto will be in Capricorn for the last time in 248 years. Right after the election, Pluto will be in Aquarius, symbol of a new and electric dynamic that will continue to influence the collective psyche for the next 20 years. In one sense, it doesn't matter who wins. There will likely be a radical change from the past in how this nation, this world, is governed. There will be a surge toward more freedom and individual rights, which is the hallmark of Aquarius, despite what each side accuses the other of offering. Yes, I know, it sounds naive, but the cosmos doesn't care about accusations, opinions, or theories. It only cares about truth and necessity, and kindness, if we are to ever attain a collective sense of unity. And that well concludes this week's newsletter. A couple of things going on in the MMA world. If you'd like to check it out at the website, MMACycles.com, they're having their big investment seminar in Slovenia, September 19th through 22nd. You still can register. The 2025 forecast book is on pre-sale. That's the printed book. You can get the mundane section that we will also be converting to audiobook, or you can get the combined mundane and financial. If you're going to get it anyway and you want the cheapest price, now it is. And the trading app fired off again this week with another beauty and caught the reversal in the broad markets this week and got a little piece of that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, MMA. That was helpful. So that's several. We had some in gold and, and uh, also in the market this week. So that was good. Continues to shine. Have a wonderful Labor Day if you're in the United States. If you're around the world, we will see you back next Saturday. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great weekend.